How's it going, everybody? So we have a fun review today as we're talking Abigail. This was actually one of my most anticipated movies for the entire year, believe it or not. Ever since that first trailer dropped, I bought into the hype immediately. It's radio silence. This ensemble cast looks great. Plus, it's vampires, particularly a ballerina vampire. After a group of criminals kidnap the ballerina daughter of a powerful underworld figure, they retreat to an isolated mansion to watch the girl overnight, unaware that they're locked inside with no normal little girl. Every so often, in the horror genre, much like we saw back with Radio Silence is Ready or Not, as tantalizing as it always is to create horror movies that are hellbent on executing serious horror subject matter, those type of horror movies definitely are enjoyable in their own way. It's just as great sometimes when you see a filmmaker take an idea and spin it into something fresh and all around incredibly fun, which a film like Abigail gleefully delivers on in blood-soaked fashion. Rarely, if ever, these days in the horror genre, particularly the subgenre that involves vampires, you don't see a lot of fresh takes. So with a film like Abigail, it's practically engineered to bring maximum levels of chaos once the story kicks into full gear after the initial setup within the mansion is out of the way and we're introduced to this electric cast of characters who each bring this great variety, their very unique personalities. The greatest comparison to this film I could make, and it isn't just the fact that it involves vampires as well, is From Dusk Till Dawn from Robert Rodriguez. Considering how bonkers that movie was and it was a blending of genres with a memorable cast of characters set in one central location, Abigail feels very inspired by films of that ilk and also stuff like The Lost Boys. Maybe even a little bit of Fright Night too. Though they definitely are inspirations for Abigail, Matt Bettinelli Open and Tyler Gillette, their style and visual flair continues to be right up my alley, whether it's the Scream films, Ready or Not, or this. Slowly they're becoming some of my favorite horror directors. In hindsight, especially with how everything with Scream 7 went down, I'm actually quite glad that Radio Silence chose to do this instead, because they completely unleash an Abigail. There are so many different insane horror action set pieces in this that are downright jaw-dropping to watch. It's one of those type of movies that you have a blast watching even though it's extremely bloody and gory. There's a bit more blood and violence than I even anticipated going into the film. And it does at the end of the day boil down to Abigail as a character which is evident to me by watching the film and how she's utilized that they really wanted to leave a unique mark in horror with her character. Again adding to that fun factor watching her use these ballerina skills to inflict mayhem on everyone and this entire cast of characters trying to figure out how to even survive this situation. Never until now did I ever think a ballerina vampire would be such a cool idea. But she's definitely creeping up in the new horror icon status just after this one outing, at least to me personally. Another huge thing that I love so much about Abigail is the blending of the genres. We've seen a lot in Radio Silence's previous work. That balance between the horror aspects of the film and the comedic aspects. Both of those separately in Abigail are excellent, but the blending of the two makes this movie so special. There are many moments throughout Abigail that are genuinely pretty scary, but in between all these scares, there are some pretty big laughs. There are a wide variety of funny moments, one line. I love so much of the back and forth banter between all of them and Abigail. And the good joke of the movie is this cat and mouse style game where she's trying to hunt them down, having an exceptional time doing so. I mean, she's a straight menace. And that's on top of all the crazy stuff that we find out is in this mansion while they're exploring it, trying to find ways to get out of there. Outside of the horror, one of the major things that can make or break a movie like this is the ensemble that they assemble for it, and Abigail has one of my new favorite ensembles in a horror film. Pretty much everybody in this is perfectly cast. There's so much to enjoy about each and every one of these characters. Realistically, I definitely could go down the entire ensemble cast and praise everybody, but there are some major standouts I want to give even more praise. Firstly, we have to talk about Dan Stevens, who now is two for two for me this year between Abigail and Godzilla X Kong the New Empire. He finds new ways to just be such a charming delight on screen. Though, with this character here, he does come across charming. As we also learn down the line, he's also fairly diabolical. You have to remember, these characters at the end of the day are criminals. Catherine Newton is someone I'm very hit or miss on, depending on the project. I like her a whole lot, or I'm not that impressed. But here in Abigail, I enjoyed her performance a whole lot. She has some sassy one-liners, bringing a good amount of laughs, even as her poor character gets put through a whole lot of shit in this movie. Also, a major scene stealer I think a lot of people are going to love in the film is Kevin Durant's character. Out of everyone, he has some of my favorite moments. Being this sort of strong goofball character. Being a big fan of Euphoria, it did make me a little bit sad to see Angus Cloud in this because of course he passed away not too long ago. I'm not entirely sure if this is his final on-screen performance, but it's a solid one. However, the big major standout performance in Abigail out of this ensemble by far is Melissa Barrera. She is a true star in this role as Joey. To me, she's the most likable of the bunch and she gives this grounded yet confident performance. And was the character I was most invested in not only surviving this, but learning 
more about her backstory compared to these other characters. At this point in time, three movies in with the two Scream films, now Abigail, I'm loving this pairing between Radio Silence and Melissa Barrera, and I hope that we continue to see this pairing for the future, whether it be in horror or another genre entirely. Touching more upon that, you would think that the story is very simple and straightforward, just survive in this house while a vampire tries to kill you. There are some very interesting twists and turns that you wouldn't expect in the story that add many layers to these criminals' backstories along with Abigail as things slowly start to unravel and many secrets are revealed. One of the few things I was more mixed upon as they do spend large sections of the plot getting into heavy exposition dumb lore, stuff like that, but I was having such a blast of an experience that didn't really take me out of the experience whatsoever. It's certainly one of those movies that because now I know all of the big secrets within the story that if I revisit it, my opinion will be even better due to potentially missing certain things I didn't catch on the first watch. All around, Abigail is a film that's such a wild experience. It's a really clever, fresh take on the vampire subgenre of horror films. It has a fantastic cast behind it, delivers on some amazing gore, bloody visuals, while also managing to be completely hilarious at the exact same time. Radio Silence has done it once again, crafting another great film within the horror genre. For me, I think they've been all bangers to this point, all of their films. So I'm really excited to see where they continue to go as filmmakers in the horror genre. Like I said before, between this, Ready or Not, and the Scream films, they're slowly becoming two of my favorite horror directors right now. But now for my thoughts on Abigail, once you get a chance to check out the film, let me know down below in the comment section, what did you think of Abigail? Did you like the film? Did you not like the film? Show your thoughts down below, because part of the fun is having that conversation with you guys in the comment section. Thank you guys, as always, check out the videos. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel to update reviews, reactions, unboxings, and more. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.